I used Photoshop CS2 from 2005 for a week and here's what I found out. With my Creative Cloud subscription, I have access to all the new versions of Photoshop. So that got me thinking, what would it be like to use an almost one year old software? So I did a bit of research and I found out that you can download it for an archived website from Adobe. So that's what I did. And I was pretty surprised that it worked on my Windows 11 machine because I've set up a Windows XP virtual machine in case it didn't because I wasn't sure. So the installation worked flawlessly like you would install a modern software like Photoshop 2022. So that was no problem. I was actually really surprised. You install it like a normal Windows program. Despite its old age, I used the old version for around a week and here's what I found out. So let's jump into CS2 and do a few things. So here we are on the front of the computer. So let's open Photoshop CS2 which is over here with the feather icon. Then the first thing I noticed when I launched it the first time is that it seems to load a bit slower than the newest version of Photoshop, which makes sense because there's almost 20 years apart between the two pieces of software. Maybe it has to do that I'm using it on a Windows 11 machine and it was developed for Windows XP. So I'm gonna click on do not register because it's no longer supported by Adobe so the servers are offline. But let's click on close. And in the first minutes, the software seems to be a bit unresponsive there. I'm gonna import a few pictures into CS2 and then we're gonna do a few things and I'm gonna tell you about the experience I had by using it the last week. So here I imported a picture into Photoshop CS2. Here we have a picture of a Porsche 911. So here you can see that it's loading again. So let's begin by blurring that license plate. So on this piece of software there's no smart tool like you have on the newest versions with smart select or all those cool features like you just drag it around your subject and then Photoshop does the rest. Here you have to do manual labor and here you can see not responding. So I don't know what's happening right now because normally it works better. That's Murphy's law so when you try to show something it's gonna go wrong. So here we go. So now let's select our license plate here, like on a newer version, then you go to filter and here it doesn't say blur gallery, you don't have that, you just have blur and then you're gonna choose Gaussian blur and I tinkered a bit with Photoshop CS2 in the last day so here I already have something input so let's press on OK and we are done. So let's press Ctrl D, most of the shortcuts are still the same so now if we would like to select our 911, there is no smart select or select subject. If you go to select, you can see there's nothing to uh, select it automatically. Even the select and mask is not available on this software. So you would have to use the pen tool and then select it around. You have to be a master then of the pen tool, select it nicely and then right click and then transform to a selection and then you can cut it out so the barrier of entry is higher on CS2 than on the newest versions of Photoshop because on the newest versions you can go to, for example to edit and then replace the sky in a few clicks here you have to do a lot of manual labor to uh, color match cut it out and then blend everything together so it's more of a hands-on software but there's still some automation in the software for example if we go to the filter you can see that we already had vanishing points i didn't know that photoshop cs2 already had that that's for example to make mock-up boxes or to put things in perspective so let's do a mock-up box and i'm going to show what i mean if you saw my tutorials about that or if you're a longer viewer of the channel, you're going to know what I mean. So I'm going to import a mock-up and a logo and then I'm going to be straight back. Here I imported two pictures, my channel logo with name and a box. If you watch my channel for longer, you're going to notice that I used those exact two pictures for a tutorial how to make a mock-up box. So let's drag this one. <laughs> now it should work better. And now we should be able to drag it in. Here we go. And now we're going to press Ctrl T and 
we're gonna enable the ratio tool and now we're gonna make it bigger and here we have those weird three mouse cursors maybe that's do that I'm using Windows 11 I don't know I never used Photoshop CS2 on XP now we're gonna press on control to select and now here we selected our picture so let's press on control C and now let's make a new layer here now let's hide our layer let's press ctrl D to deselect now let's go to filter vanishing point so the procedure is still the same on the new version of Photoshop if you watch my tutorial so that didn't change so we're gonna make four points one here one here one here and one here now we're gonna paste the logo gonna drag it and here we go and then you're gonna say yourself but how do you remove that white no worries we're gonna do that with a blending mode we're gonna use multiply and back it's gone we could use like I did on my tutorial the brush tool to remove that edge so it's perfect but yes I'm gonna do that so let's do that so I uh, first I didn't want to do it but I'm gonna do it here. You're gonna see how it works. So here we are more in clear. So we could press here and then on the shift key to make a straight line. So let's move that. Let's put the pencil again and the brush. And now it looks nicer. So here we have a mock-up box. So yes, you can see it's a bit more choppy than on Photoshop 2022 but it's still pretty responsive for a 20 year old software and it's actually really usable if you're looking for a free software yes Photoshop CS2 is now free because it's no longer supported so you have to go to uh, as I said in the intro to an archive website from Adobe to download it so here we did our mock-up box now we uh, could change its color but for this I'm gonna open another picture you can see how changing the color works in Photoshop CS2 but first here's what we're gonna do we can add some text for example I'm gonna show you how the blending modes work on this version of Photoshop because it's a bit different they changed the setup a bit how to access it so let's enter some text for example mock up now let's press ctrl A to select it a smaller font maybe 400 so be decent here you go now let's select background and now we don't have this one to align it properly here you go and now we can for example change its color we have to select the text tool uh, which color should we take we're gonna take brown like the box it's not a pretty brown but it matches well so now we we'll add an outer glow we could double click on the thumbnail or on the layer on the newest version of Photoshop you right click and then you click on blending options and here we can add our outer glow so here it is and let's clear from outer glow so let's change the blending mode and then let's pick black for the outer color we could increase spread the size so it's more visible go and then here we could add a drop shadow on the newest version of Photoshop it's exactly the same procedure so normal this is we could add some here and spread make it big and here we have some 3d looking text it's not my prettiest work but it shows how the thing works so now let's open a landscape picture. I'm seeing that my camera is blinking red. My camera battery died. So saying that I'm gonna import a landscape picture with this house here to do some color editing so we can change the contrast, the lightness, the hue, and maybe other factors that are included with those settings. So let's click here and then on U and saturation. So First, I'm gonna drag down the U to give that house more of a pink vibe because I really like that pink house. So I'm gonna change the sky back to blue so it doesn't look that weird. So let's pick out the greens and now let's pick this picker here. So here it picked out the cyan. So now we can drag the U back to blue. So now the sky looks really dramatic. So 
What could you do? Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Purple sky is a bit too much. But that one looks really dramatic with that house. Saturation maybe not that bright lightness. Really. La, that looks really nice, really dramatic between that contrast between that pink house and that really dark blue dramatic sky. I really like that. So gonna leave it like that. So now we're maybe gonna add some contrast and brightness. So let's add some contrast to accent to put a more dramatic accent to that picture. So that's a bit too much. Uh, no, not much maybe. Fine, let's enter it manually with the keyboard, so let's use, here we go. Now the picture looks really dramatic for my taste. Maybe you don't like it, but I really like it with that really dramatic sky with that pink house in the front. That sky looks almost threatening, like a thunderstorm is about to beat down on the landscape. So here we are. So here we have it, the spot healing brush like you have it on the new versions of Photoshop. So you can increase the diameter of the brush. So then, ah. <laughs> yes, now it should work better. Let's load it and it looks decent actually. See, if I click on that stove, but it's gone. And then you can, you can change the source of the sample. But here I'm gonna keep it on proximity match. So you can remove the stones so that works flawlessly too so but I don't think we have the content that we fill when you put a large patch and then you press on delete I don't think that was introduced to yet on this version of Photoshop so yes Photoshop CS2 is actually a really powerful photo editor it's maybe not as easy to use as the newest version of Photoshop because there's none of those automatic aids like selection select and mask selecting hair, trying to select hair in CS2 has to be really fun because on the newest version you have a button when you go to select the mask, it's a refined hair or how it's called, and then you can remove color fringing and whatever, and here you have to do that all manually with the UN saturation, with HSL and all those tabs, so the barrier of entry is higher. The newer software is more powerful too, but this one, as I said, is free, so you can tinker with Photoshop if you don't want to spend the money for a subscription or you can't afford it or you don't have a credit card or whatever. I would give Photoshop CS2 a try and then you see what it's like to work with Photoshop. Because the tools are in the same position, this is on the same, here you're gonna notice that the lock doesn't work. So. The workaround I would use is right click, duplicate layer, for example name it landscape and then I'm gonna delete this layer and here you go you have so let's uh, drag it into the trash and here we have an unlocked layer I don't know if it doesn't work anymore because it's on my Windows 11 machine or if you click on the lock on Photoshop 2022 it disables the lock so here it works Ah, now it works. I don't know why it didn't work. So let's go back. You can see if it works then. Let's go. You can see that it doesn't work. I don't know why. That has to be a bug. So let's drag it back into the trash. But here if we try to lock it, it works flawlessly. It has to be a bug. So what should we do next here? Uh, I'm gonna see what you can see that uh, all the smart features are missing, but you still can do most of the stuff, of the basic stuff like layer mask, vector masks, a new fill layer, you see there's a bit less, an adjustment layer, of all the stuff is already included too. If you want to use Photoshop CS2 and you want to try Photoshop, that's a great point to start. I hope you liked this video, if you did don't forget to give it a like so the video can spread to more people. A subscription would be great. See you in the next one.